Hello and welcome back to another book review. Today we're going to be talking about Archaeology is Rubbish, A Beginner's Guide, written by Tony Robinson and Professor Mick Aston, though one suspects not necessarily in that order. This book was first published in 2002 as a hardback edition and then in 2003 as a paperback, as I have here, by Channel 4 Books. The RRP was 12 uh, that's the UK pounds, brand new and at the moment it goes for as little as a penny plus postage on Amazon. Now I do believe I first got this book back in 2003. It must have been brand new. I was to head off to university the following year and this book was given to me very much as a light jab at uh, my chosen profession. Archaeology is rubbish. Then again, this also actually was an excellent introduction to archaeology, and in that sense, the beginner's guide certainly holds true. One of the first things I noticed about this book is that it doesn't really have a, a traditional contents page, uh, and I suspect that this is because the writers did not want to intimidate people right at the beginning of the book with a uh, jargon-laden wall of text. Words like uh, context, uh, human remains, uh, CBM, uh, dendrochronology, this kind of thing might have put people off simply picking up the book and reading. Indeed it says on the back that uh, this book will encourage those with an interest in digging but it will equally amuse and engage those whose archaeological ambitions are limited to turning the pages of this book. The book actually proceeds, therefore, without a contents page, as a series of chapters, literally chapter 1, chapter 2, chapter 3, and so on. And in that sense it unfolds more like a novel, more like a story, than a traditional textbook. The clever thing about this structure is that actually carefully woven into these chapters are in fact many of the staples and standards of an archaeological textbook. It's simply given to you in a way which is possibly more accessible to people who are more accustomed to reading a novel. And indeed this novel begins very cleverly in your back garden. Just as with many real-life archaeologists, our first exposure to broken pottery is typically in the garden, especially in a garden here in the UK. Often you'll find broken bits of china, uh, building material like bricks, maybe even the old clay pipe, possibly some glass. And often this material is left over from when the house was built. Builders, maybe they dropped a cup and they didn't be, you know, couldn't be bothered actually putting it in the bin, so they threw it in the spot where they knew topsoil and a garden would eventually go. And many archaeologists begin their archaeological journey by finding some china in the garden and then it's sparking a question that leads to a whole career of, of archaeological intrigue. In the same way, this book takes that moment that so many archaeologists have and actually encourages us to go along on a journey. And while this narrative won't necessarily take you to university, it certainly is a clever way of taking you from initial discovery all the way through to a full excavation. Indeed, there is a, a healthy archaeological warning in this book, uh, quite close to the beginning, that does warn you that, well, you know, while you can, if you want to, dig up your garden, you need to make sure that you have permissions and also consider the consequences. And so, as the story unfolds from the initial discovery through to that full excavation, chapter by chapter, so too, chapter by chapter, does a textbook by stealth unfold, uh, thematically as follows. We begin with that initial case study in the garden, finding some pottery, perhaps while doing some weeding, and having some initial thoughts as to what that might mean. This is followed up by a brief history of archaeology, beginning with looters and antiquarians, through to the, the initial stages of what we might call the profession of archaeology. We are then introduced to some basic terminology, starting with words like trench and test pit, through to concepts such as stratigraphy. This is followed up by an exploration of bones and what bones can tell us about animals and people in the past. There is an exploration of the relationship between archaeology and history, uh, somewhat criticising the attempts of some archaeologists to exactly link archaeology to history. For example, uh, Schliemann's attempt to find the Iliad version of Troy, this kind of thing. Of course, in a book from the Time Team team, there is a solid section on geophysics and also actually what to do if you come across treasure. 
At this point, this book for beginners does pause to emphasize the responsibilities of an archaeologist. Gold, coins, hordes of silver and other treasures can be very exciting and indeed worth something, but we are reminded that the actual initial value of this material for the archaeologist is in fact its context, and it is the responsibility of the archaeologist to preserve that context. Coins can help to date a site. The materials in a hoard can help tell the story of a site. Why did these materials come here? How did they come here? What does it tell us about the people who are here and who put this material in the ground or who left it in the ground. All of this is crucial to understanding really what archaeologists are interested in and that is the people, the people behind and around that material. And so, yes, emphasising those, those responsibilities is crucial. But the book also doesn't shy away from the fact that some archaeologists unfortunately have sticky fingers. From there, the story of the excavation proceeds actually into a, a diary of the dig. I very much appreciate the way in which the excavation unfolds in a realistic manner. Weeks go by between chapters, with very little being found, until something is found. A few days later, two harassed men in tracksuits arrive at Norton's Field in their jeep. They're ex-academics who run their own private geophysics company and have been subcontracted to do this job by West Hampton Archaeological Trust, who are in charge of doing the excavation work. Each lunchtime at one o'clock, Sinead bellows, clean up your loose. This is followed by a couple of minutes of scraping and sweeping. Then one or two diggers disappear down to the pub for three quarters of an hour. Time passes. Then one day the tranquil atmosphere of Norton's Field is broken again, this time by the sound of low loaders. They buck up and down as they enter the site. Strapped to one is a block of toilet facilities, and to the other, two large porter cabins. It's clear that the authors had a lot of fun writing this book. Not least because some of the frustrations of dealing with various institutions are dealt with in a satisfying way. Here, for example, Tesbury's is a supermarket chain similar to Sainsbury's. You phone the county archaeology unit in a rage. You want to go down to Tesbury's and have it out with that Philip Clark immediately. Frankie says, relax, don't do it. <laughs> a bit of a jokey reference there. The GFIs and evaluation trenches have shown that there isn't any significant archaeology on the far side of the site, and because a good relationship has been developed with Tesbury's, there's no reason why building work shouldn't begin there straight away. Sinead needs someone to liaise with the builders, and everyone thinks a young, fit-looking digger called Katie Jane would be perfect for the job. From now on, she'll pop over to the building site three or four times a day to check on whether any archaeology is coming to light and it's generally agreed that the builders will be particularly happy to come to her if they spot anything that looks vaguely ancient. And so, just as with the best episodes of Time Team, or for example series like Pub Dig, this is one of my favourite ways of presenting day-to-day -day archaeological work. It's a way which is accessible, it involves and invites people to come in and see how archaeologists are thinking as the logic of an excavation proceeds. Now, at this point, I think it's worth just taking a moment to acknowledge how surprising this book is in some respects. It was written by a professor and a TV presenter, and published by a television production company. And so you would think it would want to present a fairly clean, easy, friendly, hobby-like vision of what archaeology is. And yet actually it deals with the niggly day-to-day -day frustrations of negotiating with a supermarket over access to a building site in such a way so as not to impede the building process too much. Uh, the day-to-day -day problems of commercial archaeology in a way which is realistic uh, and I think in that sense deserves recognition and commendation. And while this story and excavation proceeds and expands, at each stage new information is always introduced to us in an accessible and charismatic way. Diagrams are clear, notes are highlighted, and indeed sometimes they're often literally put into the book or drawn into the book as though someone has put a little post-it or something to remind you of an important idea. 
again, it's that sense of accessibility, that sense of an unfolding story, the immediacy of this book that I found very pleasing when I first read it and that I still find very pleasing today. One of the reasons I really wanted to review Archaeology as Rubbish is because of chapter 15, a final flourish of brilliance in this text that brings everything full circle. In a very gentle way, this book encourages you, and indeed encouraged me as a young mind just about to head off to university, to consider the truth that one day almost everything that we see around us will decay and may even become an archaeological site. You see the supermarket that is built upon the archaeological site which is uncovered through the course of this book one day becomes archaeology. And uh, right at the end of the book, in chapter 15, aliens from the planet Patink <laughs> come down to earth and they uncover the supermarket. And this is not only a brilliant way of introducing the universality of decay and archaeology, but also actually it's a brilliant way of introducing the fact that archaeologists talk in strange ways about sites in the past that may have seemed very mundane to people who lived with them. You see, archaeologists attempt to use neutral language when describing archaeology. We don't want to bias it too much by forcing you to think of something in a certain way. And yet, actually, that itself is a bias. When we talk about something as a, a rectilinear feature, it is, in fact, shaping the way that you uh, think of the site and the possibilities of that site. At the north end of the checkered area was a barrier of shattered translucent silica panels. Over the top of this barrier and behind it, a tangled mass of metal sheets was evident. Given the amount of energy the fabrication of such metal would generate, this building must have been a very high status, and our first thoughts were that it could be a place for a local governor. Strewn amongst the debris were collapsed concrete and brick turrets and battlements. Certainly this building either belonged to a life form under threat, or one which wanted to announce its military might in order to impress the local inhabitants. These aliens these archaeologists, in trying to be good scientists and describe the shattered silica windows at the front of the supermarket in an unbiased language, have in fact directed themselves down an entirely incorrect pattern of thought. What was a supermarket has become a military installation. What uh, was the present has become the past. And what are aliens? Well, are all too often archaeologists. In a very real way, archaeologists, we, are aliens dealing with rubbish from the past. And this book introduced that concept to me in a wonderful, wonderful way. So, in summary, I would say that Archaeology is Rubbish, A Beginner's Guide, is an excellent beginner's guide. This book eased my way into the world of archaeology and I'm so glad that I saw this before I ever laid eyes on a copy of Renfrew and Barn. This is a far less intimidating but no less meticulous introduction to archaeology and crucially it's fun. And so of course I strongly recommend Archaeology is Rubbish, A Beginner's Guide to interested amateurs and students who are starting out their archaeological careers. The book is a slightly older textbook now, but it is nonetheless a good grounding. You know, the basics are there and the basics are still good. I would also recommend this book actually to seasoned archaeologists. Those people who are perhaps looking for a gentle way to remind themselves of the basics, uh, a gentle way to remind themselves of what it's like to be introduced to archaeology for the first time, and perhaps a playful way to challenge themselves as to high concepts such as future archaeology and the way in which the language that we use every day does in fact bias how we think about archaeology, and also actually how we talk about archaeology to the public. Archaeology is Rubbish is far from it, uh, and I would give this book a solid 9 out of 10. So there you go. Hopefully you've enjoyed that book review, and if you have any suggestions of books you'd like to see reviewed in the future, please do comment below or send us an email and we'll get right on that. But also, actually, in all seriousness, I hope this video has served as a reminder never to judge a book by its cover. 
You see, a book like Archaeology is Rubbish doesn't really look as serious as a book like The Social Archaeology of Houses. This book looks like something that you might find in a university library. It looks like something that you will use uh, uh, to write a seminal essay on the topic of, of the social archaeology of houses. This book looks like something you might find in a doctor's waiting room. But actually, I would say over the years, I've referred to this book more than I have to this book. And the simple reason for that is that this one is just accessible, user-friendly, and actually contains really good, solid reminders of how to talk about archaeology, how to think about archaeology, and also how to introduce archaeology to others. This book is very useful in very particular circumstances. This one is a good beginner's guide. Anyway guys, as ever, until next time, do take care. Bye bye.